Good afternoon. So, Ozillo put out a a press release that said 75% of new home buyers uh, have regrets about their new home. And I got to thinking, you know, I'm in a business that deals with referrals constantly. Okay, if I do a terrible job, people don't refer me. So why would I ever want to uh, have a new buyer uh, have regrets about the purchase of their home? I, I mean, it's just unbelievable to me. And so I went online and by the way, Zillow is a wonderful company in the sense that they know how to generate um, uh, buzz. Uh, they put this out as a press release. And uh, then in the press release, there's links to all of their new products uh, to help in the search to buy a home. So brilliant marketing on their part. Uh, kudos to them for that. Uh, I just wanted to take a look at it. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently than we normally do. Um, I'll try to I'll try to add some stuff within the uh, press release, and it's a little hard to read. So, I I do in the in the description I do have the Zillow uh, press release uh, link, but I also have one from a different place that's a little bit easier to read. And so that's the one we're going to use. And so let's get to that now. Here we go. It says seventy five percent of recent home buyers have regrets about their new home. A less frenzied market could ease buyer's remorse by giving shoppers more time to weigh their options. The top regret cited by recent buyers is purchasing a home that needs more work or maintenance than they expected. Nearly three quarters of successful buyers wish they had done at least one thing differently. Nearly 40% wish they had taken more time searching for a home or weighing their options. And most recent home shoppers faced buyer burnout, pausing their home search at least once during the process. And we'll go over uh, some of the ways to avoid that and, uh, and just my thoughts in a minute. But I uh, wanted to go over the article, purchasing a new home in a rapidly appreciating and hyper-competitive housing market can feel like winning the lottery. But a new Zillow survey finds that even those who are successful often make compromises and can suffer from buyer's remorse. Current and aspiring home shoppers can learn from the regrets of these pandemic era buyers with help from new technology and a housing market that could offer buyers a bit more breathing room. I disagree with all of that. Uh, it, it depends on the agent and who you're working with, 100%. Um, Zillow's survey finds three quarters of those who successfully purchased a home in the past two years say they have at least one regret about the home they bought, and that's 75%. About one third of new buyers regret buying a home that needs more work or maintenance than expected, and a similar percentage regret buying a home that is too small. And I have things in the end that we can talk about that we can kind of avoid some of these things. Uh, the pandemic-driven feeding frenzy in the for sale market added challenges for buyers, especially those purchasing for the first time. Uh, said Zillow population scientist Manny Garcia. This research suggests that many of those buyers ended up in a home that was less than ideal. It is important to remember that even in a balanced market, most buyers have to make compromises to stay within their budget. However, to minimize regret, aspiring buyers should be wise to establish where they're willing to compromise and what's a deal breaker before shopping. Very hard to do. Um, I think one of the things that new home buyers uh, look at uh, differently is they're like, you know, this is $300,000 and this is what it gets me. I think we're very underwhelmed by the, uh, what, what your money gets you in, in a home um, across the board. Um, and, you know, you always get this, th like if your parents have a house, you're like, well, I, obviously I want a better house than my parents. And that's really, I mean, it's when you go out there and you, and you see the market, uh, you learn very quickly that uh, for at least new home buyers, they're going to be, pretty underwhelmed. And then it says, a checklist can help shoppers establish their needs versus their wants. When shopping with a partner, the right home should meet the needs of both people to avoid regret and resentment. Uh, so I don't know that a checklist really helps. And what's funny is I've seen like search terms in Google uh, for like a home buyer checklist or a home seller checklist. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. I mean, you kind of have to know what you're looking for. Uh, intuitively, uh, or with the help of an agent. Uh, on the Zillow app, buyers can add a shopping partner to share listings and use SharePlay to make collaborative, collaborative shopping easier. And this is where um, Zillow is doing a fantastic job, putting in links to products that they offer uh, or that are features that they have on their website. Um, most successful buyers wish they had done at least one thing differently during the shopping process, with 38% wishing they had spent more time searching for a home or weighing their options. About one quarter would have shopped for and purchased a home in a different area. 
a vast majority of successful buyers say they had to make at least one compromise in order to afford their home, 81%. Nearly two in five say they ended up in a location that increased their commute time, while 32% purchased a home that was smaller than they initially planned to buy. Um, it says, I, I kind of went down a little bit. Uh, buyer burnout has become increasingly common amid rapid home price appreciation, with nearly 60% of buyers say they took a break from their home search, while 72% of prospective buyers say they have done the same. Both prospective and successful buyers who paused their search were most likely to do so because of the type of home they wanted to buy became too expensive. Now, let's just shorten this down. So unsuccessful home buyer is somebody that's out there looking for homes, hasn't gotten one yet. Successful home buyer is one that did get one. Um, both groups said they had paused their search at least once because of the home they wanted to buy being too expensive. And in this market, the houses, while you waited, just kept getting more expensive, which is terrible. I mean, it's very, very um, uh, difficult to realize that if you would have bought a house four years ago, uh, you, you would be in a great equity position right now. Um, the pandemic era buyers faced unprecedented conditions. They had far fewer homes to choose from and far more competitions for the home that were listed for sale. Inventory fell to a new low down more than 40% compared to pre-pandemic levels, while home values surged nearly 20% in 2021. Now, I don't feel sorry for buyers in general. They may have had fewer homes to choose from and far more competition, but what was driving that competition? The fact that we had historically low interest rates on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So there was a, there, they had a benefit going in. And if you bought early, you were in pretty good shape. It says today's buyers face similar challenges, but in a calmer market, they should have more time to assess their options before making one of life's biggest financial investments. Um, you know, first of all, the market right now is still hot. And second of all, um, it is a big financial investment, but um, when you do that, you put way too much weight on it, okay? Uh, for example, if you bought a house, let's say for $150,000, okay, you should be able to sell that house tomorrow for at least $150,000 or maybe, maybe less, maybe 130, but you're losing 20 grand. A new car these days is 50. So I don't know that, I don't know that it's as, I don't know. It's like the life changing, altering decision, uh, that, that people make it out to be. Now, I've said it on occasion, but I, I, I just don't. I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's, if you put that much pressure on it, um, you're, you're bound to uh, make a, a, a bad decision based on the pressure you've put on yourself. Uh, so that's the article. And uh, I just wanted to go over some of the things that I, that I saw uh, with it. Um, and let me get to that. So here we go. Uh, the top regret is that they purchased a home that may need more work than or maintenance and inspected. This is why you don't buy a house as is without inspections. Like seriously, every house is gonna have issues, but asking your family member over to take a look before your purchase is not getting a, a professional inspector. And that's crazy. Which is worse, paying 500 bucks to get an inspection to find out that there are thousands of dollars worth of repairs needed, or not getting an inspection and paying thousands of dollars for repairs? Uh, I've seen that throughout this is, uh, we're gonna do it as is, no inspections, and then you don't even get a property inspection which is dumb. Um, and you say, well, that's what the, for this house, that's what we had to do to get it. Right. But then you have to go find a house where that's not the case. And you say, well, we've looked at 10 houses. We'll look at 20. I mean, you have to find a situation where you're able to inspect the home and uh, where you're able to make some sort of decision based on that. This is my opinion. Uh, number two, nearly 40% wish they had taken more time searching for a home or weighing their options. Uh, this is wrong. I see this all the time. You hire a buyer's agent and you have no idea if they're any good. They show you two or three houses that look pretty in the photos and you buy it. You trust the agent. There's nothing wrong with that, but contrast that with the way that I usually work. Uh, we look at lots of houses and when we're looking, we talk about why one home is priced differently than another. We get a sense of value for a location. We learn that if a house is going for 300,000 in one location with the following amenities, then if a house that comes up in that same location, it will probably go for the same price. We don't focus a search strictly on price. Let's say, for example, $300,000 in all of St. Louis City, all of St. Louis, Jeffco, and St. Charles County. 
that would be an easy way to screw up the home buying process and have regrets because there's just too many houses. I mean, different prices, different places. I prefer to show houses when they're first listed. This strategy allows for my buyers to have at least one or two nights to think about it if they really want to purchase the home. You'd be surprised. Often I will show a house to buyers and they are ready to write an offer. And then the next day they decide the house really wasn't right for them. I'm loath to schedule a showing on a Sunday night at 6 when offers are due the same night at 8 p.m. This is an easy way to get buyer's remorse. Buyers have to realize that they're in charge. If they stopped buying houses tomorrow, the, ho the market would go down. Buyers and their agents are driving the frenzy. It's important to understand that. And it's my job as an agent to help educate you on the market so that you can buy a house without remorse. And these are some of the ways that we do that. Um, you need to find an agent that you can work with, that you can, you know, uh, uh, understand, you know, and, and, and be comfortable with. Um, and what is it that you're actually looking for? Uh, you can, you're always going to get snowed if you look at just the pretty pictures. Um, when it says most recent shoppers face buyer burnout, pausing their home search at least once during the process, um, buyer burnout is real and it is a problem during the home search. Uh, some buyers just give up and decide to buy the next thing that comes on the market. They don't care anymore. So like, say they've looked at 15 houses. On the 16th house, they're like, I don't care. I just, just buy it. Uh, so that's one way in which uh, 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 buyer burnout is terrible. And the second way is uh, buyers stop the home search. And I swear, it's always at the worst time. For example, they leave the city for a holiday and the perfect house comes up for them. Or they get down because they lost out on a house when they offered a lot on one house and didn't get it. And so they don't go back out there and start looking. And then they choose to wallow around in sadness when their house that they actually could buy and that was going to make perfect sense for them uh, was up on the market and sold with somebody else. Um, that's not going to get you a home in a hot market. Uh, so you got to keep, you got to keep at it. Buying a house is a hunt. You're going on a hunt. 31% um, of, uh, of new home buyers regret buying a home that is too small. Uh, and this can happen in a number of ways. One, you looked at the total living area versus square footage. So if you look at just the first floor square footage in a ranch, for example, that's going to be a pretty accurate indicator of the size of the home. When you add in the basement, though, that's going to make the house look twice as big when it's really not that big. That's the difference between living area, which is what you see on Zillow, and square footage, which is what you'll see on most, uh, most real estate agent supplied uh, listings. Um, if you bought a fix and flip and the refrigerator wasn't in the kitchen when you walked through, you would immediately know your error when you move in and add a refrigerator to the kitchen. They take up a lot of space. Uh, and then some buyers, I have no idea what they're looking at. One of the worst things to do is to look at the professional staging in a house and buy the house because you like the staging. Stagers are professionals. They know how to make rooms look bigger than they are. Uh, finally, the vast majority of successful home buyers had to make at least one compromise. 81%. This is a stupid statistic. It should be 100%. Who among us has never had to compromise on the purchase of, of their new home? That's a part of it. I mean, I really don't understand how someone can say that uh, they had to make a compromise. And, and for all we know, is that a bad thing? I mean, life is full of compromises. And certainly when looking for houses, you're going to make compromises. Sometimes I don't agree with the compromise my own buyers make. Like, like let's say, for example, there's a two-bedroom home listed for 200000 okay? And it uh, has a two-car garage. And then there's another two-bedroom home, but it has no garage, and it's listed for the same price. It seems obvious to me to take the house that has the garage for the same price, okay? But, but sometimes that's not so. Um, but we talk about it. And I think the biggest thing is, is as a buyer's agent uh, and an, a real estate agent in general, you're worried about getting fired. You're worried about getting fired, number one, and you're worried about not, not being able to uh, have a successful uh, sale or purchase. Uh, in this case, you're worried that you're not going to be able to get your buyers a house that they want, and they're, they'll leave you. And so you've wasted all your time. Uh, and so we're not, we're not as, um, we don't discuss things with our, with our buyers enough. Uh, and that's something that I think uh, I try to do. I try to do. I try to be honest and upfront and uh, uh, walk through uh, why things are, are the way they are or uh, take questions and, and really work through it. Um, but I know some agents, they'll just keep their mouth shut and they will just, uh, you know, you want to write an offer, we'll write an offer. It, 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 there's, no, there's no thought to it. Um, 
And so it just depends on what you want. I think the best advice I can give in this, in this situation is, is work with an experienced buyer's agent. Okay. And by experienced, I don't mean jaded. Okay. I mean, someone that's still excited for the business, still likes getting out there to look at homes and still wants to teach uh, their buyers uh, things in the market that will help them to avoid buyer's remark remorse. Um, that being said, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I'd, I'd hate for you to ever have buyer's remorse. It makes, it makes me uh, very, very uncomfortable. Uh, but, but I understand. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one.